this moment right now at this request and we, we pray for this family there in California, Lord. We pray, Lord, that, uh, that they, they, they're going to miss this physical absence, but Lord, if it's, if it's, if it's for eternity, <laughs> then that's a big absence, Lord. That is the eternal absence. And so, Father, I just thank you that you would bring them into the covenant relationship through the blood of Jesus, Lord. Lord, it's not, uh, it's not uh, through a religious organizational structure that any man will find eternity, but it's in through the shed blood of Jesus, the finished work of Calvary's cross. <clears throat> so, Lord, I thank you. You've been, you've been bringing people by the blood for a long time, and I thank you, Lord, that that uh, you can hear and answer this prayer all the way to from Tennessee to California, and Lord, that you can. Uh, you said no man can call you Lord except by the Holy Ghost, and the Holy Ghost is not confined to a little bitty area. Moving throughout this earth, and so Lord, the Holy Ghost that's moving throughout the earth to move and. California and Brother John's family there. And I thank you, Lord, that you would bring him into your kingdom through the blood of Jesus and by the knowledge of the Holy Spirit and the convicting power in Jesus' name. And we thank you now. Comfort them even in the loss of, 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 of his cousin there in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I want to uh, I want to minister uh, out of Matthew. I'm going to start in 14 and I'm going to do a repeat verse that I used last Friday night. <clears throat> but in uh, the title of this message is Jesus healed all. Amen. And so uh, in John, I mean excuse me, in Matthew chapter 14 in verse 14 the account here is this. Uh, j uh, they just cut John the Baptist's head off and uh, and so Jesus is uh, he goes out by ship and the people saw him and they began to follow him on foot. And when they it says there was a in verse fourteen is where I want to mention for a minute. In chapter fourteen, verse fourteen of Matthew. And Jesus went forth and saw a great multitude, and he was moved with compassion toward them, and he healed their sick. How many did he heal? He healed them all. He healed all of them. But that's why I say I'm not going to be satisfied till I see everybody in this house healed. I'm not going to be satisfied until I see all my family healed. Amen. All my, my my children, my grandchildren, my son-in-laws, daughter-in-laws, uh, aunts and uncles and cousins and nephews and and, and everybody down my bloodline. Amen. I, I'm not going to be. I'm not going to quit. I'm not going. to... I'm not going to quit until I see them all born again. I'm not going to quit until I see them all baptized in the Holy Ghost. I'm not going to quit until I see them all healed, praise God. Born again, Amen. filled with the Spirit Amen. of God, and yes. healed, and yes. prospered, and blessed. Yes, Lord. Amen? Yes, Lord. Well, I believe that's scriptural. Amen? Yes. I believe that's scriptural. There's physical healing, there's spiritual healing. Yes. Financial healing, marital healing. Yes. You know, healing is healing. <laughs> if something's sick, it needs to be healed. Right. Amen? Amen? And so, uh, healing in, in every area. If your mind is sick, healed in your mind. Uh, whatever. The sick needs to be healed. He said, He healed their sick. And so, He healed all of those. A great multitude. Didn't say there was a few. It says a great multitude. I don't know how many's in a multitude. A bunch. <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> Amen? Amen? See, I wish we could get this here. We, we've prayed for one and twos for so long that we have a one and two mentality. Jesus doesn't operate that way. If He needs to, that's okay. But a multitude to Him is no more than one, so why can't a multitude be the same for us? Amen? When we, we see uh, uh, a, a move of the Holy Spirit uh, uh, bring many people into uh, the kingdom through salvation, why can't we see a multitude healed and delivered? Praise God. Amen. Amen. Does it take, do, let me ask you a question. Does it take any more faith to believe God for one as it does a multitude? No. <clears throat> no, no. We need to have a multitude mentality of, of salvation, healing, and deliverance. Praise God. And blessings. 
And so Jesus, He healed their sick. Let's go over to Matthew uh, uh, 30, 14, 35, and 36. Matthew 14, 35, and 36. And this is going to move into another gear. If you're not careful, you'll miss it. It's in chapter 14. You're in 14, 14. Go over to 35. And when the men of that place, that he's in a place called uh, Genesaret, and, uh, uh, and when the, the men of that place, it's who? Was it the women? No, it's the men. The men. It's time for the men. The men. To become men of God. It's time for men to, to, to come to the forefront. Listen. I'm country enough to know that when we used to milk cows, <clears throat> and, and you put that milk in any kind of container, if it's a jar or if it's in a churn or whatever, there's something <coughs> that rises to the top. And it's the best part of that milk and it's called the cream. Right. The cream comes to the top. It's time for the men that are in the church to become the cream of the milk and rise to the top. Amen? Amen. Amen. I believe Amen. that. Yes, I'm going to encourage all the men here to become the cream of the milk, praise God. Praise to God. rise to the top and to take their place uh, uh, and, and, and stand together, stand as one voice, one strength, one power, one heart, one soul, and one spirit, and, and be the church. Amen. Be the church. Amen. Say, bless God, we, we're the church. And it says, And when the men of that place had knowledge of him, they sent out to all the country round about and brought unto him all that were what? Diseased. Okay, this thing changed. In 14, he healed all the sick. Now they're bringing him the diseased. You see, there's a difference. If, let's say you've got the flu, you're sick. If you've got cancer, you've got a disease. You understand? And so, uh, now they're bringing him the disease. And what happened here? And, and besought him that they might only touch the hem of his garment, and as many as touched were made what? Perfectly whole. Perfectly whole. Perfectly whole. Perfectly whole. What kind of whole? Perfectly. That's the only way Jesus heals is perfect. He never healed anybody halfway. He never healed somebody three quarters away. I love what my wife said. She got this years and years ago. If Jesus heals you, you cannot be unhealed. You hear a lot of people say, okay, I took chemo and radiation, cobalt or whatever all those things they use. And now my cancer is in remission. And everybody praises the Lord. And then a few weeks later or a few months later or a few years later, come back and they say, here's what they say, my cancer came back on me. Well, when men do that by surgery, by drugs, by radiation, by chemo, all those things, well, that is different. See, that is what man is doing. And, and there's no guarantee that, that it is arrested, you understand? But when Jesus heals you, it's not going to come back because He heals perfectly. Amen. When you're, if you're ever healed of anything by Jesus, it is perfect. It's perfect healing. And it's lasting. And it's enduring. Amen? And so it says, they were made perfectly what? Whole. Complete. See, when you are diseased, you need to be made whole. You remember the woman with the issue of blood? Yes. What did she want to do? Did she ask Jesus to pray for her? No. She did the same thing that they did right here. Yes. Yes, did. She was in one. Here you got a whole multitude. You got a whole bunch of people. They brought all, all. Jesus healed them all. All the dogs came and touched the hem of his garment. Well, we're smart enough, I believe, to know what that's about. Amen? And what is that? This is what... The, the churches today, they, they, they just soon spit just to talk anything about anything that uh, like the Tali, the prayer shawl. But this is what they were touching. They were touching the hem of His garment. 
And this is, represents every covenant that God ever made. Amen, and praise God, they said, if I can just touch the what? The yeah. Word right. that we're touching. Here's the difference. This, this is a kicker right here. This is a kicker. All they want to do is touch the Word. We've got it and we handle it in our hands every day of our lives. And we, and we never, most people never healed. And, and we got it, we handle it every day. But all they want to do is just touch it. They, just want, they were touching, not a piece of cloth, they were touching the, the covenant. See, God's not a man, He can lie. And we, we act like that God uh, stuttered or something when he, when he gave us His Word as far as healing goes. But He did not. He gave it as an absolute. Amen. And it's simple. A simple touch. We sang that little song a while ago, right? Just a closer walk with thee. You gotta get close to touch, right? You gotta get close to touch. You gotta get close to touch. Well when when you uh when you and your girlfriend were or, or, or boyfriend when y'all were growing up, what do you want to do? Do you want to just say you stay over and I stay over here and we'll just kinda of look at each other? No. You wanted to hold hands, you wanted to embrace. Well the same way with the Lord. You want to get close enough that you can embrace Him. You can, you can walk in fellowship with Him. Amen? And so, they said if we can just touch the hem of His garment, we'll be what? I'll be made perfectly whole. Perfectly whole. We need to begin to make declarations. I am not only going to be healed, I am going to be made perfectly whole. From the crown of my head to the soles of my toes. I'm going to be perfectly whole in my mind and in my body, yeah. in my spirit, yeah. in my soul, in my finances, in my uh, 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 life, in my family, in every area yeah. that 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 God allows me to touch. Amen. I'm going to be made perfectly whole, complete, perfectly whole. And so He healed how many? He healed them all. Praise God. In in Matthew. 15, go to Matthew 15, verse 30. This is awesome. In, in Matthew 15, 30. Uh, uh, Jesus now, He is going down to uh, uh, Sea of Galilee. And He gets down there and He says in 30, A great what? And great what? It changed. It went from a great multitude. Now, His, 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 his knowledge, the knowledge of Him and what he is doing is intensifying. We ought, listen. We ought to be. We ought to be in this situation today, two thousand years later, where uh, uh, we we're way further down the road. It says, "In great what multitudes." Now it's not a multitude; it's multitudes. Now we have multiplied another multiple and another multiple and another multiple now we got multitudes we have multitudes what and it says and great multitudes came unto him having with them those that were what lame they brought lame people multitudes of lame people they brought multitudes of blind people they made they brought multitudes of dumb people they brought multitude of main people and many others and cast them down at Jesus' feet. And He did what to them? He healed them. He healed them. Them great multitudes of lame and halt and maimed and blind and crippled and all of those things. It doesn't matter. Jesus didn't matter what shape they were in. It didn't matter if they were blind. It didn't matter if they were lame. It didn't matter if they were couldn't speak or they were dumb. It didn't matter if they were maimed. They had an arm cut off or a leg cut. It didn't matter. He healed them all. You're talking about creating miracles. Man, I'd love to have been in that healing service. Woo! Hallelujah. Can you, okay, if you're maimed. If you're maimed, so you've got probably a missing membrane somewhere. I mean, you know, you might have had a ear cut off or you had a leg. Well, Malthus had an ear cut off. Jesus put it right back on. Can you, Right? Yeah. Yes, Peter cut it off. Do you think a sword makes a, a cut like a surgeon's scalpel? No. I'd say it was ragged, wouldn't you? Yes, sure was. I'd say, you know, there's there's got to be nerve endings and 
eustachian tubes and canal and all that. And Jesus reaches down. You know, I, I learned something about why you know do you know why Jesus did that? Does anybody know why he did that? Who did he do that for? Who did Jesus heal Malthus for? Malthus? No. He healed Malthus because of Peter. Because Peter had they gotten Peter, they would have killed him that night. Because he had he'd cut off the ear of one of the temple guards. You understand? Yeah. And so Jesus was protecting Peter. He wasn't really performing that miracle just for Malthus. He was performing that miracle for Peter, praise God. He does things to other people to protect us sometimes, to help us, and we don't even realize it. And, and so it says that they were made, as many as touched him were made perfect. Of them. Then now they're bringing the, the, the multitudes, great multitudes. Uh, and they, it says they cast them, him, them down at Jesus' feet. In other words, they placed them there. They placed them where? At his feet. That's a, that is a position of where? Of submission. If, you, if, you're, if you're cast down at the feet of Jesus, when the woman with issue of blood, she, she, she came behind Him in the press and she knelt down. She reached out and touched Him. When blind Bartimaeus, <coughs> the beggar, uh, he, he uh, came with that humility also. But a faith. Humility and faith. Humility and faith. Humility and faith. These people, somebody had some faith in operation here. Somebody had some love in operation. Faith without love won't work. Faith without love won't work. So there was great love that was that was manifested here and great faith that was manifested here. And it says that God was honoring... you got to get this picture. Who was He honoring here? Was He honoring the people that were healed or those that had the faith to bring them to Him? I believe He was honoring the faith of those that brought them. We prayed for a girl that's got spina bifida. And when we prayed for her, we looked at each other and said, she doesn't believe, but we do. Amen. She doesn't believe, but we do. Praise Amen. God. Yes. Amen. And we're asking God to honor the faith that we have yes. that she would be she'd be made perfectly whole. Amen. Amen. In fact, we told her that Jesus, Jesus is going to do that. Amen. Amen. Don't shut the house down, praise God. Amen. If you're in a if you're in a wheelchair tonight from spina bifida, and you're going to pray for them, you see, if you're like she's what a little less than forty years old. Now she's been in this situation all her life. She doesn't know what it means to stand up. She doesn't know what it means to have a, a, to walk. She doesn't know what it means to have mobility. She doesn't know all of those things. You understand? So, but. 40 years, 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, 52 weeks a year. You understand? It doesn't go away. Night or day, day or night. It's the same old, same old. So it wears you down. It wears you down. It wears you down. And then after a while, you say, this is the way it is. You have no faith to believe. Now, you, you find somebody crazy like us come along and because of our love and compassion for her, it's like we're from another world. You understand? It's like this can't be because I've lived it for nearly 40 years all my life. I don't know anything else. I was born this way. So this is the way it is. This is the way it's always going to be. And we come along and we say, we believe Jesus is going to bring you up out of the wheelchair, praise God. In her little mind, she's like, no, He's not. He's not going to do that. You understand? Because, and so, if you're praying for a person who's in a situation, you're believing for a person in that situation, your faith better be better than, greater than their faith or you're in trouble. You, you shouldn't even be praying if your faith's not greater than theirs. Amen? We have done all kinds of crazy things. I've done them. You, you may or may not have done them. With people in wheelchairs, we try to get them up. We try to we spit all over them, praying for them, and and well, we've been uh, giving them all kinds of uh, directions to do this and that and the other, and and so 
But see, that's our compassion. That's our human part. We, we want it so badly for them. It's like our children. Or maybe like our parents were to us, you know, trying to get us to straighten up. We, keep, we tell them forcefully over and over and over and over and over. And we can't make it happen. But the Lord, see, He's in perfect love and He's in perfect power and authority. And He's not moved by what He sees. See, when Wigglesworth says, I'm not moved by what I see, you and I are pretty much moved by what we see. I'm not, he, he says, I'm not moved by what I feel. See, we, have, we want to feel. I, I feel for you, you know. You, you, you can't go there because those are fleshly senses. I'm not moved by what I see. I'm not moved by what I hear. I'm not moved by what I see. I'm only moved by what the Word of God says. That's where we've got to get. <clears throat> when we walked up T.C. Thompson with our son when he was 11 days old, and they were going to crack him, they are going to tear it, cut his little chest cavity apart, pull him apart, and work on his heart. 11 days old. And, and God gave us grace to take him home that day before they were supposed to do the surgery at 2 o'clock the next day. We walked out T.C. Thompson, and my wife's got him up here in her arms. We take about two or three steps. I turn around and I said, we're not moved by what we see. We're not moved by what we hear. We're not moved by what we feel. We're only moved by what the Word of God says. And the Word of God says that our baby is healed in yes. Jesus' name. Yes. Amen. Amen. And that day, on that sidewalk, three steps outside of T.C. Thompson Children's Hospital, we made a declaration of faith over our child that we stood on and we have stood on and we believed in and we believed in the God who is more than able Praise God. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. And, and that's when it becomes real. That's when it becomes real. I'm going to ask Gene to share a testimony Sunday uh, that uh, you need to hear. Praise God. He, he's got a revelation of something uh, that is right now right here this this close to all of us, everybody in this room, praise God. And everybody that's in the United States of America right now, he's got, he, and I want him to share that with you uh, Sunday. But anyway, he says that they cast him to Jesus' heel and he healed them, praise God. They brought him to him. Can you imagine if somebody brings you to Jesus and Jesus not perform for them, then they have just been basically destroyed. They said it don't work. We have a lot of people we probably have destroyed over the years. We, You see, when we pray for them and something doesn't happen, would we have been better off just to keep them maybe our mouth shut and not even to pray? Did we pray it in faith? And the, and the answer is we probably did not. We thought we did. We believe we did. But... Uh, all things are possible only by one, one means and we're going to look at that out of the book of Mark in a minute but anyway we have to answer that question now I want to ask you a question how did the disciples learn the uh, ministry of healing how did they learn it walking with Jesus they saw the ministry of healing this has almost been lost in this thing called church today. You could go to almost anywhere and ask people, do you believe that the Lord still does miracles? Most people are going to say no. Do you believe the Lord still heals? No. Why? We have almost lost that ministry that uh, they could see. I had a man who, uh, he's dead now. And in fact, um, the Lord used me to I see him raised from the dead, but uh, he went to the largest Pentecostal church in this town, and he said, I have never seen a miracle. I've never seen a miracle. Largest Pentecostal church in this town. And he was an old man then when he was telling me this. And this is what I asked him. We're standing in his driveway. This has been many years ago. And I said, do you see any evidence that it will ever change? And he dropped his head and big old tears started rolling down his face and he said, no. 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 I, 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 don't, I don't see it's going to change. I, he, he said, I've never seen a miracle. 
He went every week, all of his life. He's in the 80s. He's never seen a miracle in a Pentecostal church. How sad, how sad, how sad. Amen? And so, I want to go to uh, uh, the disciples. They, they learned the knowledge of healing by seeing Jesus heal people. That's how you learn. How do you learn to, to do things? Uh, I had a mason one time. I said, he said, you want to learn how to lay brick? I said, yeah. He said, okay. He said, you build a corner. He said, build it up four feet high. And he said, when you get, you get that corner built up four feet high, tear it down and start all over and build it up four feet high again. Tear it down and build it all over again. Tear it down and build it all over again. He said, if you can build a corner, you can lay any brick on any job, anywhere. But he said, you got to start on the corner. You build the corners first. And a lot of people don't build the corners in their lives. And we've lost the corner. You, 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 you know the old saying we have? Well, they've got a corner on the market. Say, uh, name brands, they got a corner on the market. Well, they have built that corner up by business practices to, to know how to get your dollars. Okay? And so, uh, we, this is an area that we have, we have almost uh, uh, lost contact, uh, reality with, is in the ministry of healing. And so, we have, God is bringing us to this point and this place in time to build the corner. To build that corner. Build it up, tear it down. Build it up, tear it down. Build it up and tear it down until you get it right. Amen? So, we, there may be some things that we need to uh, uh, get it right the second time or the third time or the fourth time, but we're going to get it right. We are pur we're purposing in our heart to get this corner uh, built for the kingdom of God. Amen? Hallelujah. To see this built into the fabric of our belief system. In fact, what happened after the Gospels? What happened? The master builder, what happened to him? The master builder, he left. He left after John, right? Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. He left. You understand? Then what's the next book? The book of what? Acts. What happened in... Who was used in the book of Acts? The Apostles. That's exactly right. The Acts of the Apostles. See, Jesus got on. But they learned by fellowshipping with Jesus. They, they saw what He did. They saw how He went about it. They saw what He did. Now they have learned. They have, they have been with the Master Builder. And they said, this is, this is how He did it. And if we do it like He did it, then we're going to see the desired results. <laughs> And we're we're going we're determined we're going to get it right we're going to get it right we, we're going to we're going to see the master builder in these verses in, in in the gospels go to the gospels I'm telling you go to the gospels and watch the master builder and and and, and let's 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 go in and, and and see what he was doing how he was doing each situation was he dealing with one was he dealing with multitudes. Was he dealing with whatever and whoever and however and wherever? And look at that. Let it minister to us. Let it speak to us. And say, this, is, this was the master builder. This is the master healer. And, and so, because he left. And now it's up to the, the disciples. And now that's the book that follows, right? To the, the book of Acts. And now it's up. He was saying, okay, I'm entrusting this thing called the church to you. And so, uh, you know, in the natural, if you looked at things in the natural, it almost looks like the church is being destroyed worldwide. They're killing them by the millions all over the world. The Middle East, the, uh, uh, this thing of uh, Arab Spring, uh, has, uh, it was designed by the devil to, to destroy the, the Christian uh, um, remnant in those Islamic countries. You understand? This is a thing of the devil to try to destroy. Well, listen. In Africa, did, did, let's see. Oh, man, which one was it? Which, which country? Oh, help me, the Holy Spirit. <sighs> one of the African countries, I can't right now pull it up, has outlawed Islam in their... Which one is it? Nigeria? Yeah. No, no. no. Uh, uh, Angola. Angola. Was it Angola? Yeah, Angola. Angola. Okay, Angola. You make, yeah. They've outlawed Islam. They said, no more. 
They ain't gonna have it because it is a dire uh, uh, 180 degrees to to our Christian faith. Amen. And so they have outlawed it. People say, well, uh, you know, this just the radical Muslims. No, they're all. If you believe in Allah, you're you're radical. That's right. Yeah. Amen. And, and uh, if it comes down to it, <coughs> uh, you'll find out how radical they they can be. And so, but anyway, uh, Jesus healed them. Praise God. Them who? Them that were cast down at His feet. Praise God. Right. Now the disciples learned this, and so uh, we're in the book of, uh, of the book of Acts. Now let's go to Mark nine twenty three, and this is where I was referring to a while ago. And most of you know this, but anyway, let's look at it. I'm trying to back up something I just said a minute ago. In Mark 9.23, Mark, the book of Mark, chapter 9, verse 23. This is Jesus talking. Mark 9.23. Jesus said unto him, If thou canst believe, if you can believe, there are some things that are possible to you. Is that what he says? Oh. We don't. I've, I've said this ten thousand times, ten thousand times. You've got to deal with the three-letter word A L L all. You could read this. You could read this grammatically and leave the word all out almost every time, and it reads fine. You could read. You could leave it out right here. If thou canst believe, things are possible to him that believeth. But that's not the way Jesus said it. He said, all things, if thou canst believe, all things are possible to him that believeth. This is where I am. Let me tell you where I am. I told you I was praying for knowledge and understanding, wisdom concerning this. I have gone into the Hebrew to this word believe. And, and I'm, 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 I'm going through this. There's, there's pages of in the Hebrew of this word believe and how, and how it's applied. It's applied in different ways in different circumstances, situations. It does not just have a... It has a noun uh, definition. It has a verb. Uh, it has an adverb. Uh, it, it has different ways that believe is actually broken down in the Hebrew. But could it be possible that we do not believe yeah, amen. We, this is the crux. It's not Jesus. Jesus is not the fault. Thank you. Jesus is not the fault. He's not at fault in this. It's not the preacher that's at fault. It's not the deacons that are at fault. It's not the elders that are at fault. It's us individually. It's us. It's me. It's you. It's us. It's us that are at fault. Why? We simply do not believe. We say, I believe. But there's more. Saying I believe and believing I believe are two different things. I believe. I believe. Okay, let me ask you a question. Okay. If I, if I came up to you and I said, uh, uh, can you cut crown mold? You say, I believe I can. But you don't know how to cut it. But you say, I believe I can. So you got to cut it upside down and backwards. There's men who've been in construction for years that can't even cut the crown mold. You say, okay, I believe I can. I say, okay, let's put it to the test. Here's a saw. Here's a piece of crown mold. Cut me a piece. You start out with a 16-foot piece, and you're going to be like the guy that, that I walk outside of an Ace Hardware one day, and the guy's got a piece of crown mold this long. I had a tape measure on He said, Mr., he said, you're a carpenter? I said, sometimes. He says, do you know how to cut crown mold? I said, I've cut a few box car loads in my life. He said, can you tell me how to cut crown mold? I said, sir, that's a little more difficult to do than standing here in front of Ace Hardware and telling you how. I said, I can tell you how, but when you leave right here and go do it, that's two different things. He said, well, I started out with a 16-foot piece. And he said, i got this much left. He said, I've cut it every way I know to cut it. And I can't get it cut. 
All right. Now, why did I tell that? I tell that this. I believe I know how to pray for the sick. And so I pray for them. And I believe that I believe for them. But evidently, not evidently, perfectly, I've missed it in so many instances. Why? Because I don't really know how to believe. I do not know how to believe in every situation that I need to. I don't know how. Jesus never had that problem. I have that problem. Because I am looking at things as they may be. Brother Marvin and I were talking about this right before service. The Bible says if that know you not that your body is a temple of the Holy Ghost. And it says if any man defile this temple, who's going to destroy it? The devil? God. Yeah, God. Now I'm going to ask you a question. If I encounter somebody that is that is dis, dis, defiling this temple, and I now am going to pray for them, am I going to override what God is doing? I don't think so. Huh? I've had the same, same problem. problem. But am I smart enough to know that? No. How am I going to know that? I've got to get that by discernment of the Spirit of God. I'm not going to override God in that person's uh, situation. Amen. I'm sorry. It ain't going to happen. Amen. So God is smarter than we are. But see, out of my love and my compassion, I would want everybody. But I can't override God. You understand? Yes. We're not more powerful than God. No, sir. And so, what I'm telling you is this. We have got to believe God to teach us how to believe for every situation. What? How was this done when, when the sick came? Just it, He doesn't tell us. It just said He healed their sick. He had compassion on them and He healed their sick. Okay? Now... <clears throat> We come to these some of these other situations, and they they touch the hem of his garment, totally different way. Sometimes that he gave commands, we don't know, but Jesus always knew how to do it. We, listen, we we think we know how to go about every situation that's put before us. I believe if you study men who have really been used in the gifts of healing. That they are actually they're crying out to God. What what do, how do I go about this? How do I go about this? What do I do? What do I say? How do I act? What do I do? Why? They're asking orders from headquarters before they send the troops out to destroy the enemy, right? Amen. That's exactly right. And we operate what's that old saying? Uh fools rush in where angels dare to trot or something. That's right. <laughs> uh, and so many times we have rushed in thinking we knew. And we tried to put a belief system that we really didn't have because we didn't have knowledge and understanding how many go about it. <clears throat> and I've been guilty. I've been so guilty so many times. But I hope that I can... I'm on, I'm on a journey. And, and this journey is to understand how to believe because Mark 9.23 says, If thou canst believe, all things are possible to him that believeth. That is my journey right now. That is where I am on this journey. If I, if I, he said, if you can. You remember when Peter was trying, he was out there walking on water? I would think that would take a lot of great faith, right? But evidently to Jesus, he didn't. He said, he said, when did you begin to doubt? <laughs> oh, you have little faith. I think, dear God, that's pretty great faith. But he said, oh, you have little faith. His disciples, they said, Lord, increase our faith. You know what he said? You know, does anybody know what he said? He said, if you had faith, I'd increase it. He said, increase our faith. If you had faith. Bless God, i got faith. And I'm a, I'm a mountain moving man, praise God. I'm a devil kicking man, praise God. Bring it on, hallelujah. Boom. Bam. Nothing happens. Increase my faith. I got, I'm a faith man, praise God. The devil says, let's just see how much you got. You see, there are situations that laugh at us. The enemy laughs at us sometimes when we come up against him because 
A lesser force will always yield to a greater force. And what in every situation that we face, somebody's going to win and somebody's going to lose. Did I know how to go into this battle? There's never been a general yet that did not want to face his enemy knowing something about his enemy. His position, his strength, his armament, his whole thing. When the, one of the greatest battles of the Civil War was Gettysburg. Lee's greatest concern at Gettysburg wasn't really how many troops they had. His greatest concern was that his enemy had the high ground. Many times we face an enemy called Satan in situations and he's got the high ground. How are you going to get the high ground? There, are situ there should never be an instance where we do not have the high ground. Where is the high ground? Right there at Calvary. Mount Calvary. That's the high ground. There's where the answers lie because that's the greatest victory of the greatest battle that's ever been fought on planet earth. And total perfect victory was won. Amen? Amen. So, I'm leaving us with this. If thou can believe, all things are possible to him that believeth. I am on a journey to, to search my soul to help me not deceive myself to think I'm believing when I am just being presumptuous. You see, when you presume that you know something you don't know, then you're going to come up short. And those that you are trying to help... I preached a message one time. I was working for this woman. She had this great big old set of scales. I mean, they were, they were this high. And they were uh, the pain scales. And, and, and the way you weigh something, if you got... Uh, let's say you're going to weigh uh, my Bible. And I put it in the pan on this side. Yep. Now, that's it. Now, how do I know how much that's going to weigh? I keep adding weight over here. A little bit, a little bit. Yep. Add it too much. A little bit more, a little bit. Take. Yep. Too much. Well, now I've got to add some. Until I get what? Perfectly balanced. Well, the Lord showed me something. I preached a message on this. The title of the message was, A Brick or a Feather. Every time we pray for somebody, we're either going to drop a brick or a, or a feather upon the situation. On the scales of doubt and unbelief or faith. Every prayer we pray for somebody, we're either going to increase their faith or we're going to, to cause a, a, a situation of doubt and unbelief. What do I mean by that? There's times that we, we pray for somebody and bam, we drop a brick and their faith just goes through the roof. There's other times that we pray and all we added was a feather. All we added was a feather. A little bitty feather. We couldn't even see it move. Which is heavier? A ton of feathers or a ton of bricks? Which is heavier? Same thing. Same thing? Yeah. How, many, how many bricks does it take to make a ton? Many. How, many, how many feathers would it take to make a ton? A, a whole lot. So we may be adding a feather a feather weight each time, but we have tilted the scales one way or the other. And when we've been prayed for, or we pray for somebody else, we're either adding a feather or we're adding a brick. But we're adding something to either their faith or their doubt. So it's serious business when we pray. And we should pray in faith believing. Amen? Help me, Jesus, because then all things are possible. Amen. Thank you, Hallelujah. Lord. Thank you, Lord. Father, I thank You for this time we've had. I thank You, Lord, that something may have been said here. That, Lord, it, in simplicity, that would help us to begin to dig in just a little bit uh, deeper. To go to the Master Builder and, 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 and let Him build within us what we have need of as we face a world that needs to know the real Savior, the real Healer, the real Deliverer, the one who is able to do anything and everything and will do anything and everything that we ask in faith believing. In Jesus' name.
Amen. Does anybody desire prayer in any way before we leave tonight?